Hello, my name is Melissa Corey from Happy Quilting, and today I'm here to share with you how to do a giant, giant spiral in your quilting. Um, so to start, you're going to need your quilting surface that's been nice and basted. I'm just using a plain cloth here, and I've got my layers of batting and my backing behind it. <clears throat> So to start, you're actually going to start with free motion quilting and then change over to using a walking foot. So on my surface, I'm going to start by drawing the center of my spiral. So to do that first, I need to find where I want to start my spiral. It doesn't have to necessarily be centered. It can be off-centered, whatever is your personal preference for your design. But in this one, I am starting centered. So I'll mark that dot on a piece of paper just to show you. And when I'm drawing my first center spiral, I'm just going to move out, doing my best to keep the same distance apart from my center lines. And I'm going to do about two and a half spirals out. Now, of course, when I draw this on my fabric, not on a piece of paper, I don't want to use a Sharpie. You want to use a uh, pen that's going to uh, disappear with either water or heat. So I've already done that. It's kind of hard to see on this fabric, but you can see that it's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my machine now. And since I'm starting with free motion quilting, I obviously have my free motion foot on, as well as making sure that my feed dogs have been dropped. And then I want to make sure that I set it so that my needle is always staying in the down position. I don't bother with my quilting gloves for this because I am doing just a little bit. And just go ahead and start right there at the center. Back tack a few stitches so that it's not going to go anywhere. And then just follow that design outward. I'm going to stop and clip my tail here. Once again, we're just trying to keep right on the line. And if you freehand swirl, you can just freehand this to start, but I always find that for this particular design, it's a little easier to have a drawing to go off of. And I'm just going to move all the way out till I get to the top of this point. And now at this point, I'm going to change to my free motion foot. Now if you have, oh, excuse me, to my walking foot. Now if you have a free motion foot that's got the center U, you won't need to clip your threads, but because mine is completely round, I need to clip my thread to get started. Then I'm going to put my walking foot onto my machine, pull my tail back, and I haven't barely moved it, so my bobbin thread still should be nice and tight, but you can pull it up if you like. And I just start a few stitches behind where I was at. Bring your feed dogs back up after you've back tacked it and I go one forward one back keeping it in place now when I am using my free motion foot on a spiral I use this outer foot as a guide but that's a really long guide when you're doing a circle so I pick this spot on my foot where the metal is coming down and it makes a perfect little spot for me to keep track of and my goal is to always try and keep that little spot on my foot right there along the edge of my stitching. So to do that I'm just going to start moving around and when you first start you are going to be moving this about every three or four stitches. As soon as I'm getting off of that center piece again I'm going to move it. Now if you have a bar that you can hook into your machine that a knee lift that allows you to lift your presser foot. Oh, sorry, move the camera there that allows you to move your presser foot without having to use your bar back here. That's really going to come in handy here. And the key is to learn to use the bar with your right and you press your pedal, your foot pedal. Sorry about that. I've been stitching away and didn't realize my memory card was full. So as I was just saying, um, if you can get in the habit to where you are using the presser foot with your left foot and the um, knee lift with your right foot, you're going to be able to move a lot faster. And as you can see, the farther I get out in the circle, the easier it's going to get. You're not going to have to lift that presser foot near as often 
and you can just keep moving around in a circle, always keeping your thread lined up with the edge or wherever you've decided on your particular presser foot where you're going to line it up. Now you can always use the little extender bars that come with your presser foot if you want a wider circle and not quite so much stitching, which your shoulder might appreciate after a little while. Um, but I like to just use my presser foot. This is a great project for pillowcases, baby quilts. Um, you can definitely go bigger sizes, but the more bulk you're shoving through here around and around, the more sore your shoulder's going to get. But you do it for your project. Sorry, moving the tripod there. Most of the time when I am quilting a project like this, I'm just going to use my regular cotton thread, but because these are going to be decorative, decorative pillows on my bedspread, I have opted to use a slightly heavier thread. This is an R-Fill 30 weight thread, and I like the thicker look it has and the little bit of a shine it has. So you're just going to keep moving around. As you can see, I'm being able to stitch a few more stitches in between each time I have to lift that presser foot. And just keep it lined up constantly the best that you can. So you're just going to continue in that fashion, spiraling outwards. And I want to show you what you're going to do as you get more towards the outside. I've already got another pillow since this is for my bedspread. As I mentioned, I'm making two. So when you get to where you've moved your spiral all the way out and you've hit the edge, you don't want to keep sewing along here and wasting all that thread. So I find the quickest way to do it is to just come up to the top, align once again the edge where I'm using, and I just tack and then back tack about four or five stitches. You could get away with two or three. I just like to do a lot. And then once again, follow your stitching along the edge of your foot and just keep stitching around and as you can see I'm not too worried about all the bubbles that I get when I'm pushing it through the fabric because my presser foot, my wonderful walking foot is going to smooth those out as I get to it and sorry the edge of this pillow is moving the tripod and just come around till you get to the edge of the pillow or quilt in whatever case back stitch a few lift up your thread clip your threads and then once again go back up to the top of your pillow or quilt and start again now as you continue to do that and move outward you're going to get to eventually where you've hit all the way out on the edges on the sides of your project and so then you'll just have these teeny corners left depending on the size of your project if it's more square they're going to be larger corners and this you're just going to handle the exact same way back tacking a little bit keeping again the edge and trust me this is a lot easier when you don't have to worry about a tripod and just go until you've reached the edge of your project back tack a few Clip your threads, come back up, and just keep this process until you've stitched all the way to the edge. And mine, because of the rectangle nature of it, really isn't a whole lot. And just continue in that fashion. And when you're done, you're going to end up with this great outward circular spiral and because of the quilting nature where you're using your free motion foot you might get some of these bubbles just spray it down with water and block it and they'll come out nice and wonderful I hope you enjoy this tutorial on doing a giant spiral have a happy quilting day